Hello and welcome to the session in which we will discuss the partner spaces in the partnership. In the prior session, we looked at the initial formation of partnership and we established that the outside basis of partners equal to the adjusted basis of the property contributed. So if you contributed a piece of property, let's assume a piece of land and there's an adjusted basis of that land of 80,000 fair market value of 100,000 and you contributed this land. Well, there's a pre-contribution gain, which we talked about this, but how much is the basis? How much is, are, is your basis in the, in, in, in the partnership? You would use the adjusted basis of the property contributed. Now, how do we come up with the adjusted basis? In the prior session, I did not emphasize this point because we learned about adjusted basis in prior session. Well, maybe you purchased this land for 80,000. Maybe it was gifted to you and we're using dual basis. Maybe you got it in form of an inheritance and it's either the fair market value of the date of death or an alternate valuation date. So you want to make sure you know how to compute the basis in the first place. The assumption is you know how to do that. So that's part of the outside basis. How else can you can you contribute to a partnership? Remember, we are contributing to a partnership. If you have money, great. So if you have cash, cash is easy. So obviously, if you contribute cash. How about if you contributed fair market value of services? You contributed services. And the fair market value of these services is your basis. So let's assume you did some consulting work for this company or you provided some legal or accounting work worth of 50,000. In return, they provided you capital interest, not profit interest, capital interest. Well, the fair market value of your services is part of your basis. Now, with what we did not discuss in the prior session, we kept it simple is, how about if you contributed a property, we know that the adjusted basis are used, how about if that property carries a mortgage with it, carries a debt? Well, what do we have to do? Well, let's go back to our S corporation. What happened if you contribute that to a to an S corporation? If you contributed that to an S corporation, your basis go down. Your basis go down. Think about it. If you came to me today, okay, and you said, look, I'm going to give you my house. Okay, I'm going to give you my house. The fair market value of my house or my, let's, let's go with adjusted basis. The adjusted basis of my house, I purchased it for $100,000. I want to give you this house. You'll be very happy. I did not tell you something. There is a mortgage. There is a lien. There is a debt against that house for 150000 Guess what? If you take the house, if you take my house, which is with an adjusted basis of 1000 you'd be like, yeah, it's free. It's not free. Why? Because with the house comes the mortgage. It's as if, it's, it's as if you gave me Fifty thousand dollar. You 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 got me off the hook for fifty thousand dollar. Why? Because I gave you one hundred thousand, but I also relieved myself from one hundred and fifty thousand dollar in debt. So simply put, you actually paid me fifty thousand dollar. So every time you contributed debt, it's like what? It's like as if you are making a transfer. It's gonna reduce your basis. So, but how does it work for a partnership? You reduce liability transferred assumed by others. Let's work a simple example. We have three partners, A, B, and C. And you happen to contribute 900,000 of liabilities to this company. And to keep it simple, one third, one third, one third. Each partner owns one third. What's gonna happen is this. You are going to reduce your basis by only 600,000. Why? Here's why. Yes, initially you're going to say, I'm going to reduce my basis by 900,000. Then what happened is this. After this 900,000 goes into the partnership, so you contributed a liability of 900,000. Your basis goes down by 900,000. But once that asset, and what's that liability inside the partnership, two thirds of it, remember, we have A, B, and C. Now A is responsible for how much? A is responsible for 300,000. B is responsible for 300,000. And C is responsible for 300,000. We're assuming you are A. So guess what? Your basis go down by your basis go down by 900,000, then you are responsible for this 300,000. So once you are responsible for the debt, 
it's gonna increase your basis. Therefore, the net is 600,000. So if you contributed liability, if you contributed liability, you reduce the liability that is assumed by others. How much is the liability assumed by others? The other 600. And I just showed you how you compute this. You would say, okay, Amris, I contributed, generally speaking, I should reduce my liability, I should reduce by my basis by 900, but I'm responsible. Once the liability is inside, they're gonna say, hey, you are responsible for 300,000. Well, then I only reduce it by 600. So simply put, liability transferred, that's assumed by other is the reduction of my liability. Now let's assume others, let's assume another individual and another partner contributed a liability of 300,000. Someone else contributed a liability. Let's assume B contributed a liability of 300. So this liability is inside the partnership now. And guess what? You are responsible for $100,000. Therefore, you would increase the partner shares of the liability partnership liability because this 300,000 is inside the partnership. I, A, as a one-third partner responsible for 100,000. So you have to be very careful when dealing with liabilities. I know it's a little bit confusing. We'll work an example, but you have to be comfortable with this. Remember, you contributed the liability. You reduce your basis by the liability transferred assumed by others. And I showed you how, but you could just say, what is the liability assumed by others? I would reduce my basis by that much. And I showed you how with this example. If others contributed a liability, I will add my share of that liability because if others contributing that liability we are responsible for it i'm responsible for it i i'm, I'm a par part partner and i'm responsible for that and here we're we're assuming we're dealing with non-recourse debt and we'll talk about that later kind of define this remember there's no gain no loss when we form a partnership also the inside basis of a partnership and its own asset also takes on the adjusted basis of the property Basically the same concept. And if there's any recognized gain, usually there is no gain. So this is basically an introduction. Let's talk a little bit more about what happened subsequently to the initial basis. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's gonna help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles, my accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses, broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. Now, initial basis subsequently changes. Outside basis changes. They could move upward, they could move downward. Why would they move upward? Maybe, not maybe, from income. If the partnership earns income, remember, in a partnership, once it earns income, that income is taxable. Anything that you pay taxes on it, it increases your basis. Same thing with going downward if you incur losses. Now, why do we want to make sure the basis are adjusted? Because we want to make sure that our income is taxed once. And I will show you an example what does that mean. We want to make sure that the any deduction, any losses are deductible. How? Well, do we have basis to deduct the losses? Is it deductible or not? Also, when we make a distribution later on, do we have basis? If it's not, it might be taxable. If we have basis, it may not be taxable. It could be just a return of capital. Also, we need to compute our gain and loss when we sell that partnership interest. Eventually, we're gonna sell our partnership interest. How do we know whether we have a gain or a loss? We have to keep track of our basis. Therefore, basis go up and down. Let me show you in a simple example why th that is important. Let's assume Adam is a 30% partner in a and N partnership. Adam initially invested $22,000 in cash. That's Adam's initial investment. The partnership reported $50,000 in income. And at the end of the year, Adam sells his interest for $45,000. Now let's work the example, assuming Adam adjusted his basis properly. What is Adam basis? by the time he sold his partnership. Well, he started with $22,000 cash. Then the partnership made $50,000 in income. Adam's share of this income is 30%. It means Adam's shares is 15,000. Therefore, Adam adds 15,000 to his 
basis. Why can he add this 15,000? What's what's the what's the reason behind it? Because this 15,000 is taxable. This 15,000 flow through Adams 1040 and Adam pay taxes on this. And once you pay taxes on it, it should increase your basis because you, you don't want to pay taxes on it again. Therefore, by the time Adam sells his interest, his basis is 37. He sold it for 45. We deduct the basis and Adam will incur a gain of 8,000, which will have to pay taxes on that gain. Let's assume Adam did not adjust his basis, which he should, but let's assume did not. So you understand why basis is important. Well, we're going to take 45,000. Well, how much we sold our basis for minus 22,000 our initial contribution, therefore we have a gain of 23,000. So notice there's a difference in the gain amount. You might be saying, but hold on a second. Anyway, we recaptured the gain because we already paid taxes on the gain of 15,000. Well, there, there are timing differences. Sometimes it could be several years. So that's why you have to adjust your basis. You have to adjust your basis because you already paid your taxes. You don't want to pay your taxes twice. Let's look at more items that could affect your basis. It could affect your basis upward. It could affect your basis downward. Let's go back to the initial basis. Remember the formula when we started with, it's the adjusted basis of property plus fair market value of services. Remember why? Because you paid your taxes on that. It was ordinary income and in return, you got capital interest, not profit interest. Then you will deduct liability transfer assumed by others, whatever liability you transfer, that's assumed by others. Then you add your partner's shares of liability transferred by others. And we talked about this. Now let's talk about increases. What could increase your basis? Well, you could make additional contribution. You could contribute cash. You could make additional contribution. Also, partner shares of the partnership. What could affect it? What could affect your basis? that increases again if that if somebody transferred that to the partnership and here we're looking at non-recourse debt non-recourse debt we're dealing with non-recourse debt it means everyone is responsible for the debt non-recourse debt here whatever your percentage is you would increase your basis by that because if there's more debt there's more risk if there's more risk your basis go up you increase your basis by income items, like if the partnership earned income, ordinary income, we saw earlier with the Adams example, $50,000 times 30%, you would increase your basis. Again, non-recourse debt, here we're assuming non-recourse debt, it means it's allocated to all partners. Non-recourse debt, generally speaking, it's collateralized. It means when we took that money out, there is a morg there is a collateral, maybe, maybe a building, maybe a warehouse, in case something happened to that debt versus a recourse debt. Recourse debt is allocated to the general partner or partners. So if we're dealing with recourse debt, only the general partner or partners are responsible for that, which is just for the sake of simplicity, we deal with non-recourse debt. Exempt income items. Exempt income items, their income, they would increase your basis. Although they're exempt in a sense that they are not taxable, nevertheless, they would increase your basis. Here we're talking about municipal bond. What could decrease your basis? Well, think about it. If contribution increase your basis, any deductions or withdrawal would reduce your basis. Here, they would reduce your basis. Well, think about what else? Think about debt. If we're saying taken on debt will increase your basis by the percentage of your liability, same concept. When debt decrease, when the partnership pay off the debt, your share of debt goes down. You're off the hook. Your risk goes down. Your basis go down your basis go down, okay? Think about when, when you contribute debt to the company, it's if you're taking a withdrawal because if you gave someone your debt, it's like they paid off your debt. So this is why, this is why your basis go up because somebody is giving you, it's like you contribute debt to the company. Your risk is higher. Non-deductible expenses, just like exempt income, exempt income increases your basis also, non-deductible expenses like interest on uh, municipal bond, on investment in municipal bond. It's non-deductible. Nevertheless, it's going to reduce your basis. Other deductible and losses, we'll talk about those later. Now, bear in mind, basis can never, can never be negative. Your basis could go down to zero. Why? It's important to know this because sometimes you can contribute liabilities in excess of your basis. It cannot be zero. So what do we have to do? 
What happens when contribution of liabilities to partnership exceeds the basis? So if you contributed something, let's assume uh, $100,000 of uh, liabilities, and the adjusted basis of the asset is 75. So you have an excess liabilities over the adjusted basis of 25,000. Well, basically what you did is you relieved yourself. Somebody is, somebody gave you $25,000. That's what happened really, because you have a liability of 100,000 and somebody paid it off. Yes, they did take the 75,000, but you're, you, you have a net of 125,000. So that amount is taxable to you because if the adjusted basis is your, because if the adjusted basis is your, is, is your starting basis, minus the 100,000, now you're negative. You cannot have a negative basis. Therefore, what you have to do, you have to pay taxes on that. When you pay taxes, it's good. So Adam contributed the property with a basis of 200, subject to a $250,000 mortgage. Let's assume Adam is a 10% partner. Now, if we follow the formula under this scenario, here's what we have. We have a contribution of $200,000 in assets, a liability of 250 obviously we have negative asset we have a negative contribution in a sense we're contributing more liability than assets which is negative 50 however as a 10 percent partner adam is considered to be relieved of 90 percent of the mortgage liability which equal to 250 times 90 percent it means in other words adam is responsible for only his risk is 25,000. Now, if we net these out, so what's going to end up happening? Negative 25,000. Therefore, we cannot have negative basis for Adam, negative 25,000. So what's going to happen with this negative 25,000? Adam will have to pay taxes. It's a taxable gain of 25,000. And because his negative was 25,000, negative 25,000, once you pay taxes, what's going to happen? It's going to bring your basis up to zero because it was negative. You cannot have negative. You pay the taxes. When you pay the taxes, it brings your basis up to zero now. What should you do now? If you are a CPA candidate, enrolled agent, income, taken an income tax course, go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional resources, multiple choice, true, false, notes. That's going to help you get better grade, pass the exam, Get your professional certification, invest in yourself.